Okay, so here a week or so ago, I put out some videos concerning the conscience of man. Before he fell and after he fell, you see in Genesis 2.25 that they, they were both naked and were not ashamed before they ate of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. But we find out why, because they were not consciously aware of it. You see that in Genesis 3.7. They ate of the tree, and the eyes of them both were opened to know that they were naked, and fear entered in. And they covered themselves when they heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the cool of the day in the garden. Okay, and this is what Jesus said, I am come to seek and to save that which was lost. And we got to see what he came to seek and to save. Okay, because man was always natural, and Paul points that out in uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, uh, verses 45 through 47, Howbeit that which was spiritual was not first, but that which was natural. And then afterward, that which was spiritual. And, you know, so we've got to see, because Peter in chapter, uh, 1 Peter 3, 20 and 21, when he's talking about no one ate souls being saved by water, uh, uh, like manner that, we are saved now by baptism, water baptism, that is not the matter of washing away the filth of the flesh, but the answer of a queer conscience towards God. And this is what Paul is teaching in his letters too, you know. Blessed is the one who is not condemned in that thing which he approves or allows. As it's been translated, the Greek actually literally means to approve and for whatsoever is not of faith is sin Romans 14 22 and 23 and you got to and he's saying the same thing in first Corinthians chapter 8 he, and, and we're talking about being strong in faith and weak in faith depending on how much knowledge of God that we have because in Romans chapter 8 he's talking about knowledge concerning idols we all have knowledge knowledge puffs up but charity edifies well what is he talking about you know so let's look at that because the one who's strong in faith has knowledge that there's only one god that whatever that that little idol is just a piece of wood or whatever is nothing he doesn't eat the meat that was offered to an idol and sacrifice with conscience to the idol because he knows there's only one God. He eats it with thanksgiving to God. But the one who's weak in the faith, being emboldened by the one strong in faith, who doesn't have that knowledge, well, his weak conscience is defiled because he eats being emboldened by the one strong in faith, and his, his weak conscience is defiled. And he, now he says, now you walk not charitably. You know, destroy your brother for meat. So, I mean, we got to see, it's like the writer of Hebrews says, the Old Testament sacrifices could never, with those sacrifices, make the comer thereunto perfect, in chapter 10, verse 1. Well, in verse 9, you see he's talking about the conscience, because, you know, the one who did the service, you know, was never made perfect in regards to conscience. And, but... If you go on in uh, chapter 10, he says, But this man offered his body one time for sin and sat down at the right hand of God, henceforth expecting, anticipating till his enemies be made his footstool. You know, so we're talking about the conscience because he describes it even more in chapter 9, verses 13 and 14. If the blood of bulls and goats... And the ashes of a heifer sprinkling the unclean to the sanctification or purification of the flesh. He says, how much more shall the blood of Jesus Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered his body without spot, talking about of the flesh, purge your minds, your conscience from dead works to serving the living God. And we're talking about the remembrance of sin. You see him describing that in chapter 10. You know, that, that the Old Testament sacrifices, the very image of those things, could never make the partakers 
perfect. He says, otherwise they would would they not have been ceased to have been offered, but now they're they're offered year every year, every continually. He says, because it's not possible that the blood of bulls and goats should take away sin. And that's where he goes on down. He says, but this man, after offering his body one time for sin, has sat down at the right hand of God, waiting and expecting. And so we got to see that we're talking about the conscience of man. And that is what we're and and that is whatsoever is not a faith is sin, Romans fourteen twenty three. And not walking outside of our faith, and it has everything to do with the faith. What he was talking about, Second Corinthians chapter ten, though we walk in the flesh, we don't war according to the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are mighty through God. Talking about the Spirit of God that we were sealed with to the pulling down of strongholds, the destruction of strongholds, and every lofty thought and imagination lifting itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. You know, and, and talking about the mind of Christ and having a readiness to punish every disobedience once your obedience is complete. He's talking about coming into that knowledge of the truth that is in Christ. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Jesus is the truth. And this is what Jesus said in in John 8, 31 and 32. You know, if you are truly my disciples, you will remain in my word, in my sayings, and you will know the truth, and the truth will make you free. Now, the Jews thought he was talking about servitude to man, but he was talking about our spirit and servitude to the flesh, the law of sin that's in our flesh that Paul describes in Romans seven twenty three. that I see another law in my flesh and my members waging war against the law of my mind, bringing it into captivity to the law of sin that's in my flesh. But in Romans 8, 1, 2, he says, there is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. For the law of life that is in the spirit of Jesus Christ made me free from the law of sin and flesh that was sown into my our flesh by the first man, Adam. So we got to understand the conscience being freed from the burden of sin by the sacrifice of Jesus Christ, redeeming us back, purchasing us back out from under sin that we sold under that he describes in Romans seven fourteen, For we were fleshly carnal sold under sin. So I'm going to leave it at that. Amen. Amen.